Morgantown. You've been you know, already starting some of your coaching duties. What has it been like so far these first couple of weeks in Morgantown? Well, obviously, I got here two weeks ago and uh, left recruiting like the very next day. So I've been in Florida recruiting uh, the last two weeks. But uh, spent a couple days here just getting used to the players, got to see the players uh, run around a little bit yesterday. So that was really the first time I got exposed to them. Looking at what you have now on the team, how tough of an adjustment could it be for the guys to be a 3-4? I have no idea. I mean, I have no <laughs> idea. I don't know who's who yet. I mean, I don't know how to. I don't know any of the players' names yet. I'm going to have to learn, uh, you know, through other coaches telling you who they are, then watch tape and, and sort of clue in jersey numbers to faces, and then see them out there on the hook. Kind of a different since you were at Oklahoma State for so long. Eleven years, yeah. <laughs> so it's just starting over, and, and it'll it'll take some time, but I'll I'll learn it. Is that tough, or what were you telling a lot of recruits? Because you are changing the scheme, and if they were asking questions, some of the defensive guys that you were able to keep was that tough, or what would you tell them? Well, guys? obviously, it was a clean slate for everybody. Everybody on the team right now on defense has a clean slate. Uh, everybody gets to start over, and and the new guys coming in, obviously, it's a benefit to them because they they only come in 15 days behind, as opposed to coming in two and three years behind in the scheme. So. I think as a recruit, you're probably going, I had a pretty good chance to maybe play early because it's a new scheme for everybody. What is the scheme? Dana said, yeah, 3-4, three, 4-3, four, four, three, yeah, and something. Both. A little bit of both? Yep. Based on our personnel. We just got to figure out what we have and try to fit those pieces in the puzzle till we can recruit to what we eventually want to do, whatever that may be. It figures to be more of one than the other, though, during a season based on personnel? Uh, I think the 3-4 three, and the 4-3 three is, is so small. The difference is so small, you won't even be able to tell the difference. Really? Do you think that's becoming more of a trend in college football where you're not so locked into a scheme as you are just figuring out personnel and, and tailoring it toward Yeah, them? I mean, there aren't enough big D linemen in the country, and and so it's very hard. You're very limited in the amount of guys that you can get, you know, to rush the pass. The big four down guys, you don't get that. So you got to adjust your scheme accordingly to what you have on your campus. Normally, normally, is it harder to find four linebackers you know, if you're going to go with a front four than that, and two middle two guys to play in the middle? No, they're, they're, than it is to find a nose guard that can. It's a lot harder to find down guys. You can find big safeties that you move down, the hybrid outside linebackers, and big linebackers you move to rush in. So there's a lot more flexibility there because there's so many more bodies of those type of kids, and that's you know that's what we're going to try to do. And speed. Speed's the name of the game. You know, going to the Big 12, it's all spread, it's all throw it, so you better have some speed on the field. Saying that, it would make more sense that he would probably, probably be 3-4 at least the first year right. rather than fine. Right. You, you, we'll be 3-4, but there are times we got to go to 4-3 when you get a run ball team that wants to run it down your throat. So we're going to have to do both just to survive different, you know, down and distance. What has the situation been like so far I mean, with no official announcements really of, of uh, your own position, of Mike Smith's position, just that you've both been hired? Um, I mean, usually I think it would, a DC would want to come in and be able to bring on his own staff, but it seems like this has kind of just been like everything coming together as a whole rather than you coming here and saying, these are my guys. Well, Dana and myself are working together to try to put together a staff that, that's cohesive, not only with the defense, but with the entire staff all together. And, those assignments will be uh, dictated at a later time, but we pretty much know what direction we're going. We just Dana wants to wait until we get everybody hired to announce the positions. You say at a later time, is there any sort of projection of like this is what we should know by? That's a Coach Holgerson question. <laughs> <laughs> How did the, the scheme change come about? Was that something that Dana talked to you about when you interviewed, or, or was that something you brought about to him? How, how, how did this idea develop? Just both of us talking about the, the state of college football and the state of defenses and the state of offenses and uh, how it's so fast. And, and you look at Pittsburgh and what they do in the 3-4, and they create so many problems, and it's difficult for, for offenses to pick up a lot of moving pieces. When you line up in a stagnant 4-3 or a 3-3 stack, or whatever it happens to be, and you just sit there, they're going to know what you're in. So I, I'd anticipate a bunch of moving around and a bunch of people coming from all different directions. You mentioned uh, 11 years at Oklahoma State. What What is it that draws you here to, to Morgantown? An opportunity uh, in my career that uh, will hopefully will advance me. Just talk about Dana Holgerson, how you've seen him develop these past few years, and he's been only one year with him at Oklahoma State. Well, Dana and I have known each other for 12 years recruiting Houston. Uh, I've recruited Houston for 22 years, and I'm from Florida, so I have the Florida connection for recruiting. But him and I had the Houston area forever, and we've developed a friendship. And, uh, 
eventually the time came, I, I, you know, we got him hired at Oklahoma State. And what he did for us at Oklahoma State um, was remarkable in, in one year. So it's a credit to him. And as I see him now, as he has, he's developed into a head coach and a leader. And uh, it's been it's been fun to watch the short time I've been around him in that role. Is it true that you recommended him to, to Mike Gundy at Oklahoma State when when that job came open there? I told you that. that was, I saw that on the paper in Tulsa, I believe. It's true. Okay. <laughs> so what is it about him that, that led you to do that then and, and that made you want to work for him now? I didn't want to defend him, <laughs> number one. I've been a defense coach my whole life. I didn't want to defend him, and I thought he'd be a great fit for what we had at Oklahoma State. And uh, the reason why I came here is, like I said, it's an opportunity for me to grow. Uh, the reason why I stayed at Oklahoma State for 11 years is I promised my daughter I'd let her graduate from high school. And uh, she graduated from high school, so I can go. <laughs> How does the relationship change with someone when you're friends, you drinking buddies or whatever, and he's <laughs> <laughs> I hope. <laughs> and suddenly, you know, now he's the boss. So yeah. I mean, that's just being mature and being a professional. It's just a matter of, you know, he's the boss. I respect what he says, but I think our friendship tends to lend to him. He's going to respect what I say, and we're going to work together. It's, it's not he's in charge and everybody's underneath him. We all work with this thing together, and we're going to develop this team as he sees the direction it needs to go, but with help from the leaders on both sides of the ball. I'm not sure if the question was really asking there. Uh, is the recruiting class done for now, or are you still expecting that there may be some other guys? There, there could off? be some additions. You know, there could be some additions. Since we have a couple left, there could be a guy pop up. You're going to be working primarily with the defense, but you're working a lot with the special teams. So how much is state, obviously? What plans do you have for the special teams here? How much are you working with? Well, I think that was uh, an attraction for Dana about what we've done at Oklahoma State in the kicking game. And we've got a Ray guy and a Lee Rosa back to back. And uh, I, I do think that we're going to discuss it as a staff and see what best, again, what best fits West Virginia. Not what I did in Oklahoma State, but what best fits personally up here. This may be a tough question for you to answer, but did Dana come to you and say, I want to run a 3 4 and I want you to help me do it? Or did he say, I want Joe DeForest to coach defense for me and what do you want to run? We talked about me coaching defense and what do you think we can do within the framework of our personnel to be the most effective and that, that's it. We're going to develop this thing based on what we have and I can't, I wish I could give you an answer but you can't. you got to say you got three down linemen, you got six rush ends, whatever you have. Right. you got to figure it out and that's something that spring ball is all about. So three, three, five, eight. When there were athletes to fit it, it was good, really good. And it, which I'm sure is the case with every defense, but can maybe smooth out some of that consistency from year to year with a different scheme? Well, players make plays. The better your players, the better the plays are. So, you know, I don't know. I, I just know that, um, you know, Coach Castile did a great job here for a long time. And uh, his scheme worked. And uh, Dana wants to change, we're going to change it, and we're going to see what we can do with it. Different coaches have different philosophies when you switch jobs that late in the recruiting season. What, what, what's kind of your philosophy in terms of we told the kids you were recruiting at Oklahoma State and then moving forward? Do you, do you encourage them to go there? You, the one thing I, I never would do, whatever, I've seen so many guys leave staffs and recruit the guys they're recruiting for OSU and try to bring them here. Never did that and didn't believe in it. Told every kid that called me that I was recruiting, I said, You need to go to Oklahoma State. He pledged them, not to me. And that's the right thing to do. You were asked why this move made sense, and you said it's an upward move in your career. What what does the opportunity to be, what, whatever it is, co-defensive coordinator, defensive coordinator, that's mean a, that, to you? That's going to be decided at a later date. Well, but it's an it's an opportunity in my discussion with Dana for what my position was at Oklahoma State. This could be a step up for me professionally, and that's what I I felt like I, I needed to do. Hey, Coach, knowing the players are the key to any successful defense, let's just talk real philosophically, real universal here. Let's talk a little bit about the 3-4. Dana just mentioned that's what he'd like to go to. Why you, why you like it, why it works, the, the pluses, the minuses of the 3-4. Well, the pluses are they don't know where you're coming from because you have – you can show edge rushers from both sides. You can drop one, bring the other. You can bring them both. You can drop them both. So the athletes you have on the field are a little bit different. Um, they can play a, a six or a nine technique or a five technique, or they can rush a pass, or they can drop in a flat. So it gives you flexibility to give them the offense multiple looks and then in turn give them multiple defenses. So I think uh, that's the, the number one thing. And obviously, 
again, going to the Big 12, and they're all pretty much spread except for about two teams, like Kansas State and, you know, uh, probably Iowa State some. It's going to be wide open, so you better have more athletes on the field and you better have a lot more speed to, uh, to basically cover the offense that we're running here at West Virginia because it's all 